Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. So in today's revision session that is the third day of revision session of general medicine the today's topic will be on the quick revision of the cardiac murmurs. So what I will do is I will just give you the various clinical scenarios right these are all the clinical scenarios and these are all the options from A to L. So with the clinical scenario which has been given you need to fix in which clinical condition you have that cardiac murmur. So the first clinical scenario if you see here the patient has tapping apex beat, loud S1, mid diastolic murmur, loudest at the apex in expiration lying on the left side. So among the options given to you are like mitral stenosis, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, aortic stenosis, friction rub, tricuspid regurgitation, aortic regurgitation, tetralogy of fallow, atrial septal defect, aortic incompetence, mitral regurgitation and ventricular septal defect. So the question is about the presence of the mid diastolic murmur. So mid diastolic murmur you have that in two conditions. One is mitral stenosis and the other one is tricuspid stenosis. But the question says that the murmur is heard at the apex. So if the question says the murmur is mid diastolic murmur is heard at the apex and that too it is increasing on expiration it is very much suggestive of mitral stenosis. Now let me just give you a quick recap of the topic of mitral stenosis. So mitral stenosis what is the most common cause of mitral stenosis? It is the rheumatic heart disease and what will be the complications or what will be the clinical manifestations in patients with mitral stenosis that includes shortness of breath and this shortness of breath is mainly because of the pulmonary edema and they also have chest pain and palpitations. So why is that these individuals have the palpitations is because there will be left atrial enlargement that will make the individual to land up in atrial fibrillation causing palpitations and they also have hemoptysis. So one of the very important complication in mitral stenosis will be the development of atrial fibrillation and that is due to left atrial enlargement. And what are the other complications that the individual can have is the individual can have dysphagia right and why is this particular dysphagia that is because of enlarged left atrium compressing on the esophagus can cause dysphagia and there can be also hoarseness of voice and this hoarseness of voice in patients with mitral stenosis is because of the enlarged left atrium will compress the recurrent laryngeal nerve and that is what is called as Ortner syndrome. So Ortner syndrome is another important complication of mitral stenosis and in patients with mitral stenosis in certain individuals there can be also one important physical examination finding that is malar flush. Now I'll just give you a quick overview of what will be the auscultatory findings in patients with the mitral stenosis. So if you take the first start sound, yes in patients with mitral stenosis you will have loud S1. But in which clinical scenarios of mitral stenosis you will have soft S1 is. For suppose if the mitral stenosis is like calcified mitral stenosis then you will have soft S1. And for suppose if the individual is having mitral stenosis associated with atrial fibrillation then you will have variable S1. Then coming to the second heart sound. So second heart sound the P2 will be loud but not in all cases of mitral stenosis the P2 will be loud. So in cases of severe mitral stenosis there will be development of pulmonary hypertension. So once there is development of pulmonary hypertension there the P2 will be loud and you have many added sounds in between S2 and as well as the S1. So what are these added sounds between S2 and S1 is opening snap will be there and this opening snap it's a high pitched sound and that is due to forceful opening of the mitral valve during early part of diastole. And the next is mid diastolic murmur as already I have descri described about the mid diastolic murmur. This mid diastolic murmur it is a low pitched murmur. It is heard at the apex and it increases on expiration and it is best heard in lying left lateral position. Then pre-systolic accentuation. This pre-systolic accentuation is due to forceful left atrial contraction that will give rise to your pre-systolic accentuation. So these are the summary of auscultatory findings in patients with the mitral stenosis. Now so the first clinical scenario we have done that is mitral stenosis and you take the second clinical scenario. The individual is having heaving 
अनडिस्प्लेस्ड एपेक्स बीट एबसेंट ए टू विथ इजेक्शन सिस्टॉलिक मार्मर रेडिएटिंग टू द कैरोटेड सो इन विच क्लिनिकल कंडीशन यू विल हैव दिस इज यू विल हैव दिस इन पेशेंट्स विद अयोटिक स्टिनोसिस नाउ लेट मी टेल यू सम इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट द अयोटिक स्टिनोसिस लाइक वॉट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ अयोटिक स्टिनोसिस मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ अयोटिक स्टिनोसिस इन चिल्ड्रन विल बी बाइकस्पीड अयोटिक वैल्व वेर एज इन अडल्ट इट विल बी कैल्सिफाइड अयोटिक वैल्व और कैल्सिफिक डिजेनरेशन ऑफ द अयोटिक वैल्व विच इज नथिंग बट यूर स्क्लिरोटिक अयोटिक वैल्व दैट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ अयोटिक स्टिनोसिस इन अडल्ट नाउ वॉट आर द सिमटेमेटोलॉजीज इन पेशेंट्स विथ आयोटिक स्टिनोसिस यू कैन रिमेंबर दिस न्यूमोनिक दैट इज सैड दिस सैड स्टैंड फॉर सिंकोपल अटैक द एंजाइना एंड एज वेल एज द डिस्निया दैट इज शॉर्टनेस ऑफ ब्रेथ एंड सिम्टोमैटिक आयोटिक स्टिनोसिस इज द वन वेयर द इंडिविजुअल विल हैव वर्स्ट प्रोग्नोसिस दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एंड दीज इंडिविजुअल्स हैव टू अंडर गो सर्जिकल आयोटिक वैल्व रिप्लेसमेंट और ट्रांस कैथिटर आयोटिक वैल्व रिप्लेसमेंट now what are the important physical examination findings in patients with aortic stenosis so if you palpate the pulse these individuals they will have a narrow pulse pressure right and why is that they have narrow pulse pressure because the systolic blood pressure is reduced and that is the reason why we call it as the individual having narrow pulse pressure right and the second heart sound it is quiet or absent second heart sound and if the individual is asymptomatic then medical management will be useful but if the individual is symptomatic right symptomatic aortic stenosis they definitely require surgical correction and this surgical correction that is in the form of transcatheter aortic valve replacement or surgical aortic valve replacement has to be done so this is about the treatment in case of the aortic stenosis now after having discussed about the preview of aortic stenosis let me tell you the important auscultatory findings in patients with the aortic stenosis first heart sound is usually more or less normal but second heart sound the a2 will be soft or a2 will be absent and if at all if a2 is soft the split will be a narrow split s2 will be there in patients with aortic stenosis but if it is a very severe aortic stenosis the s2 it can be even single then what is a murmur in aortic stenosis it is the ejection systolic murmur which is heard in the aortic area and that will be radiating to the carotids and it's a harsh ejection systolic murmur and in aortic stenosis you should be very much aware of the galavardin phenomenon as well so what is galavardin phenomenon it is the murmur of aortic stenosis that will be radiating to the apex is what is called as the galavardin phenomenon so that is about your important points of aortic stenosis so the first clinical scenario is on mitral stenosis and second clinical scenario is on aortic stenosis third clinical scenario if you see it's a pan systolic murmur heard best at the left lower sternal edge and it is increasing on inspiration in a patient with pulsatile hepatomegaly so where do you have this sort of murmur right pan systolic murmur which is increasing on inspiration that you will have in patients with the tricuspid regurgitation now let me tell you some of the very very important points about the tricuspid regurgitation so the etiology is causing tricuspid regurgitation includes the infective endocarditis of the tricuspid valve now this infective endocarditis of the tricuspid valve it is a well recognized cause of tr mainly in case of the intravenous drug users and other causes of the tricuspid regurgitation it also includes the carcinoid syndrome we have some important jvp findings in patients with the tricuspid regurgitation that includes the there will be prominent v wave or giant v wave will be there and y descent will be an early y descent will be there and these patients with the tricuspid regurgitation they may land up in right heart failure and so in the clinical scenario which has been given the individual is having pulsatile liver and why is that pulsatile liver that is because of development of the right heart failure and the pulsations over the liver are felt during systole so it is the systolic pulsations that are being felt over the liver in patients with tricuspid regurgitation
And what will be the auscultatory findings in tricuspid regurgitation? So S1, S2, S1 again if you take. First heart sound, it will be soft. That is mainly because of your soft T1. And the murmur if you observe, it is a pansystolic murmur, which is heard in the fourth left intercostal space, parasternal line. And this particular murmur, it is increasing on inspiration or it will increase on inspiration and there will be no radiation of the murmur. So this is the description of pansystolic murmur in tricuspid regurgitation. Now coming on to the fourth clinical scenario. So the first clinical scenario is MS. Second clinical scenario is AS. Third clinical scenario is TR. Fourth clinical scenario. Displaced volume overloaded apex, soft S1, pansystolic murmur at the apex that is radiating to the axilla. So you will have that in patients with the mitral regurgitation. So fourth clinical scenario, it is suggestive of your MR. Now let me discuss few important points about the MR. So MR, the most common cause of MR will be rheumatic heart disease. And this MR, it can be of two forms. One, it is acute MR. The other one is the chronic MR. Now, if you take this acute MR, what are the causes for acute MR? Number one, the myocardial infarction. And very commonly, it is your inferior wall MI or the anterior wall MI will contribute to the development of acute onset of MR. And the other causes of acute onset MR will be papillary muscle rupture. So this acute MR, it is poorly tolerated by the individual because there will be volume overload of the left ventricle and this volume overload of the left ventricle cannot be withstanded by the left ventricle and thereby there will be acute left ventricular failure. So these patients with acute left ventricular failure, they present with acute onset dyspnea and this acute onset dyspnea is mainly because of the acute pulmonary edema. That is what you will see in mitral regurgitation. And some rare causes of mitral regurgitation are mainly that include connective tissue disorders. And these connective tissue disorders are Marfan syndrome and as well as the Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. And what are the important auscultatory findings in patients with the mitral regurgitation? First heart sound will be soft. Pansystolic murmur is heard at the apex and that will be radiating to the axilla and that will increase on expiration and your P2 will be loud. Why is that P2 being loud? That is because of development of pulmonary hypertension and in patients with MR you will have a functional murmur and this particular functional murmur it is a caricombs murmur and this caricombs murmur it is mid to late diastolic murmur. Right, it is mid to late diastolic murmur. That is what is your caricombs murmur, and most of your functional murmurs they are your low pitched murmurs. And this caricombs murmur is heard mainly in case of acute mitral regurgitation, right? Which is a functional murmur. But what is a true murmur in acute MR? Actually, in chronic MR, you will have the pansystolic murmur. But whereas in case of acute MR, what you will have is a short early systolic murmur is heard. So that is about the fourth clinical scenario that is mitral regurgitation. Now you take the fifth clinical scenario. Fifth clinical scenario is left parasternal heave and harsh pansystolic murmur at lower left sternal edge that is also audible at the apex. Now so in the fifth clinical scenario pansystolic murmur is heard left parasternal area but there is no variation with the respiration. If you take the third clinical scenario, that is tricuspid regurgitation, even that is also heard in the left sternal edge, but that is increasing on inspiration. And even the fifth clinical scenario, that is also heard in the left sternal edge, but there is no mention of change in respiration. So it is suggestive of the ventricular septal defect. So the answer is the VSD. Now let me tell you few important points about the VSD. So if you take the prevalence of VSD, it is around 2 in 1000 births and this VSD depending upon the size it can be a small VSD or a large VSD. If it is a small VSD most of these patients they remain asymptomatic. Most of these patients they remain asymptomatic and the murmur which is heard in small VSD will be Malady D. Roger murmur and these small VSDs they undergo spontaneous closure and treatment is not required for this small VSDs. But whereas, for suppose, if the individual is having a large VSD, 
there is high chance of development of complication that is left heart failure so whenever the individual develops left heart failure then you need to give diuretics if it is a large vsd and what is the indication for surgery in case of your vsd if there is failure of medical therapy that means the patient is not responding with your diuretics that is the point when the surgical correction has to be done or if there is growth failure or if there is elevated pulmonary artery pressure these are the indications for surgical treatment in vsd now let me discuss the named murmurs in the cardiology on auscultation in rheumatic fever that is acute rheumatic fever causing acute mitral regurgitation there will be carycombs murmur and in aortic regurgitation you have a functional murmur that is austin flint murmur and this austin flint murmur it is a mid diastolic murmur and in pulmonary regurgitation an early diastolic murmur is heard which is a functional murmur which is the graham steels murmur and in complete heart block or av block the named murmur is retent's murmur which is also a diastolic murmur and in left anterior descending artery stenosis the named murmur is the dox's murmur and this is also the diastolic murmur right and due to air emboli you will have the mill wheel murmur right so these are the auscultatory findings in patients with the so these are the named murmurs in various abnormal conditions now you take the pan systolic murmur you will listen that in vsd mr and as well as tr so how will you differentiate that in case of vsd the murmur it increases on inspiration in sorry i am very sorry uh, in vsd there is no change with respiration whereas in mr the murmur increases on expiration whereas in tr the murmur increases on inspiration and mr murmur it is heard at the apex whereas vsd and as well as tr murmur they are heard at the left sternal edge right L left sternal edge vsd murmur it is heard in the fifth left intercostal space left parasternal area whereas the tr murmur is heard in the fourth left intercostal space whereas the mr murmur which is heard at the apex will radiate to the axilla right whereas vsd murmur there is no radiation and even the tr murmur also there is no radiation so this is about the differential diagnosis of the pan systolic murmurs then coming to the systolic murmurs systolic murmurs are the one which are heard between s1 and as well as the s2 early systolic murmur you will listen that in case of the acute mr and then acute tr whereas mid systolic murmur is heard in as then ps then hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy there you will have the mid systolic murmur or the ejection systolic murmur and late systolic murmurs you will listen that in case of mitral valve prolapse syndrome and lastly you need to know about the diastolic murmurs and continuous murmurs early diastolic murmur is heard in aortic regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation mid diastolic murmurs you will listen that in mid in case of the mitral stenosis and as well as tricuspid stenosis and late diastolic murmur that is your carycombs murmur actually carycombs murmur it is a mid to late diastolic murmur that is about the diastolic murmurs then lastly like you have the continuous murmurs continuous murmurs are those which are heard throughout your cardiac cycle and they may peak at around s2 and very very important condition is in case of patent ductus arteriosus ruptured sinus of valsalva then in patients with av fistula systemic av fistula and as well as the coronary av fistula and you will also listen in scenarios like venous hum then in conditions like mammary sofal so these are the conditions where you will listen the continuous murmurs okay so this is the summary of your entire murmurs so if you see the clinical scenario first clinical scenario you will have that in ms second important clinical scenario you will have that in as third in tr fourth in mr fifth you will have that in vsd so this is in summary or in quick recap of the murmurs so if you have liked this particular video just press the like button and just mention in the comment section uh, 
like which topics you want for the revision in the subsequent days thank you very much